is the ketogenic diet harmful or beneficial? What's up, everyone? Welcome to my very humble channel. Let's get right on into it. Is the ketogenic diet bad for you or harmful or is it good for you? Is it this or is it this? Now, it is in my belief, of course, it's amazing. I think that people failed, failed miserably on a ketogenic diet due to the fact that they were taught abysmal, terrible concepts like eating high protein or all these keto products or even the beta hydroxy butyrate salts. People just seem to miss the whole boat on what ketosis is, to be ketotic, to have your body use fat as fuel. Yeah, that went out the door and the commercialization of a ketogenic diet went bonkers. Now, with that said, it started the concept. I mean, it probably went on for a very long time because you have tribes like the Inuit, but they discovered a ketogenic diet or ketones worked really well in the brain of children and people with epilepsy. This is in the, the, uh, the 1920s, specifically 1924, with a Dr. Russell Wilder, he figured out that high fat would calm down this storm in the patients with epilepsy. And then somehow it sort of grew to the Atkins diet where Dr. Atkins was on the precipice of learning that our bodies could use ketones and this could moderate and keep your insulin sensitive, which then if you're insulin sensitive, you're not gonna gain weight. I mean, if your glucose is stable, your A1C, your hemoglobin A1C is stable, and your insulin is stable, and you don't have things like a thyroid conditioner or, or uh, like you don't have hyperthyroid or hypothyroid or some type of autoimmune disease, you're not going to gain weight. If your life is a healthy, active life, you're not going to gain weight. So people went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but for like, cheese puffs on a ketogenic diet. And it literally wrecked people. It literally wrecked them. In the beginning, people lost weight, followed by heart palps and keto flu. That was the big terminology back in the day is that people developed the keto flu. What is that? That's keto, ketosis, being ketotic, gone wrong. People just stopped eating a ketogenic diet. And I'm going to go through some of the things that are the misnomers, the misconceptions, people getting it wrong, not understanding it, how these studies are garbage because they were never done long enough with the right nutritional strategy. And it has to be done correctly or else it's pointless. You're just going to get bad results. Let me pull up this guy. Now, I've, I've uh, watched his channel before and he actually has some pretty good uh, recommendations or some concepts on health, but on the ketogenic side, I think he's completely missed the boat, but let's hear what he's got to say. Some evidence that going low carb may cause people to become less glucose tolerant and develop diabetes. Okay. I know I'm not going to keep stopping because it's annoying when other people stop videos and people are talking ketogenic diet actually giving you insulin resistance. Now his concept is quite interesting, but because I've worked with 8,000 people, I can prove that his concept is wrong. Meaning if you let your body forget how to deal with carbs, your body will not know what to do when exposed to carbs again. Just like your muscles, you should not be working out hours and hours every day, but rather maybe 30 minutes a day or one to two hours every other day and so forth so that your body knows how to deal with stress and be prepared. That is the whole point of working out, right? So, 
um, working out in insulin in terms of ketosis and becoming insulin resistant, almost like a type one diabetic, not the same. If you never eat carbs, your pancreas will atrophy and your body will lose its glucose receptors to suck the glucose in when you're not exposed to any carb at all. Okay, I have to stop. That's nonsense. Your body is always going to produce enough glucose for your red blood cells through gluconeogenesis. There's a lot of people that I've worked with over the years who've used a glucometer and their blood sugar is between a, well, for somebody who's ketotic, 75 to an 83. Otherwise you get ranges from a 50 to 150 or 200 milligrams per deciliter when people are eating zero carbs over time. It really depends on the strength of somebody's metabolism prior to doing a ketogenic diet. Are they eating too much protein? Do they still have cortisol or, and their bodies are going down the cortisol pathway? Are they sleeping? Are they drinking a little bit? Are they drinking coffee? Are they fasting? All of these little details matter. That's the reason why I cannot stand these studies. They're such garbage, but let's continue. Now, scientists have uncovered some beneficial dietary hints from this wide reaching research. Fill your plate with plans to get important nutrients, including veggies, some grains, not too much. Okay, I gotta stop because here's where he starts going off. And I guess he's made his point about keto and now he's saying to eat like grains. Now, I had a client today who said, you know, not all plants are bad. And I said, of course not. Not all plants are bad. But if you have leaky gut, okay, if you were not breastfed, if you've been exposed to a lot of toxins and you've developed a bacterial imbalance, if you have issues with uh, lactobacillus or bifidobacterium, these two types and, and sort of branches of bacteria and you're out of balance, and then, or if you have a thyroid problem and you eat plants, the anti-nutrients, sorry, that's a fly frying. I love that sound. It's my little zapper. The anti-nutrients in the plants can exacerbate bad autoimmune or worsening symptoms. For example, if you have a thyroid problem and you have a difficulty, sorry, getting iodine into the thyroid and you do a bunch of like broccoli and cabbage and calling and you don't cook it very well, well, or it's raw in a salad that could have a goitrogenic effect and block iodine from getting into the thyroid. So it really is contextual and it's not like a blanket statement. Oh, vegetables are bad. And that's that. That's not true. It is genetically modified, selectively bred, cross pollinated plants that are not growing on what you see in nature and eaten out of season and with a bunch of pesticides on them and herbicides and fungicides and all this kind of stuff that becomes problematic to people with certain diseases. Pretty much healthy fats and legumes as a... Okay, let's look at this. Okay, the only thing that's healthy is that for game fish, salmon, and that avocado. The almonds are high in omega-6. The grains are high in omega-6. The peanuts, the legumes are just toxic phytic acid, which robs your body of a lot of minerals like calcium and magnesium and iron. And then we've got olive oil, not even in a dark bottle. Okay. Most of the olive oil that you find on the shelf is mixed with canola oil and it's absolute tragic and can have a triglyceride effect if it's cooked, if you cook with the shite. So the only thing that's really good is the avocado. If you don't have an avocado allergy, what about if you've got a fish allergy because nobody's farming their own fish these days, which if you're not, not farming, I meant catching your own fish. If you're not catching your own fish, then how long has it been since that fish was caught before it got onto your plate or was it exposed to toxic, toxic oceans? Was it farmed? And people are so general. This is what I can't stand. And this is why a lot of you guys become confused when you listen to this guy's advice. And if you listen to him, great guys, get some great content when it's not about keto. When he talks about what a good diet is, I'm just like, oh my God, please, no. Opposed to highly processed. Oh, he also had like beans on there. Super phytic acid, super mineral uh, uh, robbing of your body. 
and the friggin the the seeds high in phytic acid and mold no and a lot of these beans they have to be soaked to get out the phytic acid you can't eat a kidney bean raw it could literally end your life so we got to be careful with this advice large amounts of meat and dairy products. That is the bottom line in this research. Eating wisely may be one key we need to- So he's thinking that the ketogenic diet is large amounts of meats, which it's not. And he talks about processed meats. Everybody knows that I've been pushing over the time to just eat real food. I'm even trying to get people from going to, from bacon to pork belly, just fresh pork belly that you put on a pan that's pastured. I'm trying. I'm trying, but here we go. Unlock long lives or full of health. Based on carefully conducted laboratory testing of overweight men, we know that going keto does not help burn more body fat than a regular diet. Instead, it... So here's the thing. He'll say, he'll have the doctor's shirt on and say, ketogenic diet will not make you burn more fat than a normal diet and absolutely zero science. Let's keep it real. It is all about insulin control and the health of your total body, as well as your cells, the strength of your cells, your metabolism. He's not discussing this. Fat does not incite insulin. Processed carbohydrates do. Stress does. Alcohol does. Smoking cigarettes does. Chemical exposure does. He's not contextualizing, and this is how people become very confused on what to do. Plus, he thinks you become insulin resistant when you're eating no carbs, which it's not true. Your pancreas constantly has to put out insulin because of gluconeogenesis, because every time you eat something, your blood sugar spikes. Every time. Look at your insulin. Look at your glucose. You're going to find a spike in the first hour, and you should have a drop within the second hour. When you have to run real quick from a lion or stress, your body's going to go break down amino acids and convert it into quick energy, which is glucose, which your insulin has to deal with. So it is impossible for your pancreas to atrophy. If your blood sugars, like I said, a lot of people have blood sugar between the 60s and the, and the, and the 100s. Where's the atrophy coming from? You should be sitting there with a blood sugar 55 all the time with a broken glucagon and broken insulin. Forces people to drastically reduce their sugar intake. Remember, sugar is carbohydrate, the same thing. And garbage. It forces them to eliminate processed foods and junk food. Both of these are good habits for overall health and blood sugar levels. And they can help lower your risk of developing cancer but doesn't mean that you should avoid all the good carbs just because you have to avoid carbs. What's a good you know, carb? That you cannot just pass on the good carbs that your body needs. However, eating- Where's the good carbs? I mean, this guy's a doctor. Where's the good carbs? You're a doctor. You get, so he's an MD. He gets like a day of nutrition. Okay. And I don't have anything against this person. Please, 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 you guys. I just choose random people. That's why I'm not going for, I'm not analyzing any other guru videos because I don't need to get up caught up in that mess. That's why I take random people. Being a special high fat, low carb diet, like taking aspirin should probably not be an everyday habit for otherwise healthy people, right? Okay. The just is there and we don't need to go through it anymore. He's talking about taking medication and, and exercising and comparing it to a, an atrophied a, a pancreas. Let's get rid of this because I'm not down with it. No, 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 no. Okay. The, the problem is with people doing a ketogenic diet is that they're factoring in some of his concepts of eating all this protein, right? The Inuit, which I'll go into in a minute, uh, certain cultures in the Maasai were able to eat very, very high fat diets without completely destroying their health without atrophying their pancreas. We are coming as a modern human, our bodies are designed to be toilets. And so we start developing damage while in utero, while in the mama's belly with what she's eating and the quality of your father's sperm. And well, that's something that a lot of people don't really talk about is the previous damage. And then you try to do a new diet, we're gonna drop out your carbohydrates. And that really is the problem. 
you can't go from zero to hero and expect good health or good results when your body's used to high amounts of sugar, blood sugar and carbohydrates, high amounts. How is that even possible? It's not possible. The body's not going to know what to do. And therefore your body's like, where's the sugar? I'm addicted to it. Where's the sugar? Where's the carbs? Where's the, where are the processed carbohydrates? Where's the juice? Where's the ice cream? Where's the candy? And yeah, let's check out these puppies, right? This awesome tribe of peoples, the Inuit. Okay. So the Inuit, they, um, were able to, they didn't just eat meat. They also ate blubber, well blubber, which is very fatty. They fished. So they ate a lot of animal parts, food, as people call it products, which I think is a weird way to frame it. But they ate a lot of different animal parts, the fat, the organs, the meat, and they would eat it raw. Now I've had raw meat before. It's fantastic. It's amazing. It's so good. It's tender. It's not tough tough to to chew but when you're seeing it like that like a carcass on a on a thing it's so weird because i wish kids were exposed to nature and it wouldn't feel so friggin weird people are like oh my god ew liver so gross so eating a heart or thymus they're thinking that it's disgusting and then the brain body connection people are having visceral reactions to a food they've never even eaten before that's what's incredibly scary that people in the US or in Europe are so used and so indoctrinated to eating processed garbage that you try to get them to eat real food and they're like, oh my God, it's so gross. <laughs> this is where the problem's at. We are assaulted in every direction air, water, and the quality of food. There's no quality control in the US. There are so many foods here that are banned in other countries. And yet we turn our nose up at looking at a picture like you see right there with kids really loving eating this fresh, amazing, healthy food, mother nature. It's crazy. It's, it's insane. Now the problem sometimes that the, the, with ketosis with the Inuit is that they would eat sometimes when there was feast or famine, sometimes they would have more protein, which would be more difficult to get into ketosis, but they still ate roots. They still ate berries. They still ate plants that are in season. They weren't a hundred percent carnist as humans are omnivorous and they should be eating plants and animals that are not processed. That's what ultimately keeps our gut strong and our immune system strong, but we're just broken. So if the ketogenic diet is done properly and you're having fresh meat, fatty meats, you got to have fatty cut. You got the wrong camera. Got another camera. Fatty cuts of meat. If you're doing, um, if you're doing leaner cuts like elk or deer, you got to add some tallow, some animal fat, some butter to it, so we have the right ratios between protein and fat, so you don't uh, turn that protein into a candy bar because that's what your body is doing to keep the blood sugar stable, since it's so used to using glucose as its primary source of fuel and not ketones. Um, if you are managing your electrolytes, if you're eating the right amounts of protein throughout the day, and unfortunately people with broken metabolisms, and there are so many people that I work with who have hypoglycemia, that if you don't eat every couple of hours, dropping out your carbs make you, makes you more dysglycemic. If you fast and drop out your carbs, people are going through extreme tiredness, lethargy, then their hair starts falling out because of their thyroid or the HPA access. And then you, you've you got people who are so, such, so hypoglycemic. It's so good for them to do a keto diet. Oh, another fly. It's so great for them to do a keto diet, but it's if it's not done properly and they're doing the keto like bars and cookies and shakes and, and cheese and nuts and drinking their coffee and not eating enough fat and eating too much protein and then the quality of their food is garbage because they're going to Sam's Club, Costco, uh, Kroger's, Ralph's uh, to get their meats, uh, Target, uh, Walmart. That's why you're not having success. It's really difficult to get into ketosis, but once you do, because you're being dis disciplined, it's amazing. So in the short term, keto can be horrible. If you don't, if you drop your carbs, your water goes, oof, right? Your electrolytes are not balanced. 
your body is used to carbohydrates, which make it, makes you hold on to water within the cells, which then the minerals hold on to you know, stay in the body a little bit easier than dropping out your carbs. It's not necessarily better to be bloated from water because of a carbohydrate. But when you drop the carbs out and because our soils are completely destroyed of minerals, we have to get our electrolytes in very smart. And all those products, the electrolyte powders and tinctures and mixtures that are so expensive, dump them. I'm going to do a whole video on that foolery. So is a ketogenic diet harmful? It can be. It can be if you don't eat enough fat, if you don't watch your gallbladder, if you don't look at the quality of food and the timing of the food, as well as the rest of your life, rest of the life, the 24 hour day, because if you can't get your stress down, you're not going to get into ketosis and it can take you up to six months to even a year to get into ketosis because you refuse to get the stress out of your diet. You're a third shift shift night worker, or you still are eating a bunch of nuts, or you're overeating protein or not eating enough fat. It's so easy to fail at a ketogenic diet when you want things to be easy. But for those who treat their body like it's the temple and they are, it, it is like they're training for the Olympics. These are the people that are, that adapt. And these are the people that you see over time aging backwards. I've done this for 16 years and you guys can go back to the video catalog and see that I am improving my toxic bucket load is going down. The stress on my skin and my body at the age of 55 is improving exponentially. And I'm so grateful that I found this diet and I'm so grateful that I was able to apply it to my mother at the time. Note at the time. But yeah, ketogenic diet can be totally harmful. It can, can freak out your, your thyroid. Your hair can start falling out. Your libido, libido drop. Your, you start to losing DHEA and your sex hormones, progesterone drops. Or the opposite, you're getting cholesterol and the sex hormones spike and are balanced and you're regulating cortisol. You're balancing your blood sugar because you're using ketones instead of like carbohydrates that are very, very rages or advanced glycation end product is ages and rages the whole cholesterol thing oh my god we have been so duped and fooled to believe that animal fat gives you heart disease it's embarrassing almost that we would even think such a thing it's absurd and to eat a bunch of carbohydrates is a healthy thing so no eating a ketogenic diet if your body is healthy and you are smart and do well formulated protocol, like I said, treat it like it's a temple and that you're training for the Olympics, then no, your pancreas is not going to atrophy and then develop type one diabetes. No, have not seen that. Never seen that. Never, ever have I ever, never seen that. All right, guys, if you guys want to learn more, it's guys twice. If y'all want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com and book a consultation where I can iron out some of these issues that you're having with carnivore or keto or even low carb, high fat. You can also sign up for my monthly membership subscription, subscription course where I cover all three diets. That's month to month. You can do one month or several months. Or you can wait for the challenge and signups are going to be in September. I will announce the exact date once I finish making my flow chart right here. <laughs> uh, it's going to be awesome. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I've been around for a very, very long time and I'm just trying to encourage people to do things the right way so nobody injures themselves and we can all go on top of the mountain and enjoy life together because it's been crazy these last couple of years. Don't believe the hype. That's all I got to say. Be your own Inspector Clouseau. Do your own research. Don't rely on a bunch of talking heads because you're impatient to lose that weight. And I'm out. Peace. Energy at 55, going on 56 and 16 years and counting in freaking ketosis. I ain't going nowhere.